These are the top reasons you're not getting a CNC in your shop, but you may be wrong about those because you keep telling me that in emails and comments. Let me tell you why you may be wrong. So let's go ahead and get the elephant out of the room, price, because that's the major hang up for most people to get a CNC in their shop, but you're thinking about it the wrong way. This is a Milwaukee Packout, medium-sized box. It retails for about $89. I'll sell it to you for $800. What do you say? Most people will say no, because it's not worth it to them to pay $800 for an $89 box, right? That's where most people are wrong, because you didn't ask what was inside the box. What can this box do for me? So if you had bought it for $800, you would have got a $250 Festool ETS-125 sander. A Milwaukee track saw, we'll throw in a track battery, 530 bucks. Milwaukee M12 drill and driver set, 229 on retail. Two woodpecker stainless steel squares, the Delft square and the 1282, about $130 a piece. And then finally, the Festool Domino, 1200 bucks. Look at about $2,500 in tools in an $800 box. Pretty good value. You see, that's where most people are wrong about CNCs. They look at the price tag of three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, whichever model you get, depending on what you're buying, that's a lot of money. Obviously it's a lot of money, but that's not what it's worth. What it's worth is what it can bring to your business, right? And so when people look at the price tag of a tool, you have to shift your mindset from what does it cost to what value is it gonna bring to business? And I think that's where most people miss the mark on CNCs. They do not realize because you've not been there yet, how much money a CNC can bring into your business when you find the right product, which we'll touch on later. And don't get me wrong, this is not business or financial advice. I don't think that you should take giant risks with your money, with your family's money or anything like that. But if you're on the fence, you already kind of started leaning toward the CNC, I wouldn't let the price of it scare me as much as before I had one, because now that I know I've seen the product, I've seen the value that it brings to the business, then I can tell you, yeah, it will bring in money, when you find the right product. The number two, probably right up there with price, reason people will not buy a CNC is they're scared of messing something up, AKA the learning curve. And yes, it has a learning curve. Anybody that tells you it don't, is probably telling you a story. I had my own issues and struggles with it, well documented on the channel if you wanna go watch the dark side of CNC. However, once I dedicated the time to learning the CNC, really not that hard. And if you get a Shapeoko CNC, they have free trainings, my.carbide3d.com. Takes you through your first five projects. Very simple. That wasn't there when I started. I'm glad they have that available now. So the barrier of entry is lower than it was even two years ago when I started. It's just getting easier and easier with time. Here's a power tip for you. I didn't realize when I got a CNC I was gonna need, you're gonna need a digital caliper because you're gonna to need to know exactly to the decimal point how thick the wood is that's gonna be cut on the machine to put into the software. So pick up a good caliper. I'll put a couple of options down there, a more budget friendly one, and then this Matuyo brand that I have. This one's quite expensive, but there's a really good one from iGaging that you can pick up as well. Another major reason people won't get into the CNC game is because they're afraid that the market is saturated and you don't have nothing to offer. That couldn't be further from the truth. There's plenty of people willing to buy products if you get the right customer with the right product. And figuring that out sometimes will take a little bit of time. It took me a little time to figure out what sells, what doesn't, trial and error. It's just part of business. So know that going in that it will take you a little bit to figure out. You can always go to your local craft stores or local markets and see what is actually selling. Kind of take some ideas from there. Don't steal from people, but if you see a certain shaped tray or certain themed items are selling better than others, then you can kind of deduce that those products will do well in your area. When you get a good product and a good idea, it will sell well. Look at the decorations in your house, what your spouse has bought, and think, why did they buy that? Well, it was something that appealed to their interest. When you can appeal to people's interest, they will purchase from you. For instance, I have a guitar-shaped tray that we sell on our website, as well as a baseball-shaped tray. Like Those things sell well because they appeal to people's interests, either music or sports. You can do all renditions of these things in different shapes and sizes, and those do actually sell well. The next reason a lot of people won't get a CNC is they think I'm not creative enough. I can't make the files. I'm not skilled enough to make those files in the software. 
You don't have to be. That's the beauty of it. I'm not skilled in the software either. You can go to Etsy and look for the file that you're wanting. Baseball, SVG, those two words, it's gonna pull up tons of things. You can take that into the software and then tell the software what to cut, all that jazz. Or a lot of files are already programmed uh, with the depths, the speeds, the feeds, everything you need to know. You just search the file extension for your CNC. For instance, a Carbide 3D router file extension is C2D. So I search baseball file C2D, find ones that have C2D extension, download, print. Pretty easy. All you have to do is set the thickness on your material that your machine knows not to cut too deep, and then they're off to the races. If you have an idea or a logo that you want to cut out, but you don't have the necessary knowledge to make that into an SVG file. My designer's name is Brett Ferris. I'll link to his website in the description below. He's made many, many different logos for us. The Two Before Nation logo, the Outlaws Board Butter logo, and several other ones that we've used as far as SVGs to make stickers and cut trays and different things like that with the files that he sent us. So you can always hire someone to make your SVGs or your logo and then reproduce those and sell them. And spinning off of that, once you get your file set, if you've created them or you paid someone else to create them for you, you can list them on Etsy. And then you can start making passive income on your digital files. That's another avenue of income for CNC's. Because there's gonna be beginners out there like you looking for CNC projects. Another thing that holds a bunch of people back from getting a CNC is they're kind of confused on what bits they're going to need uh, to get started with, right? So there's really about five or six bits that I would recommend that you're gonna make the majority of your projects. Number one, you need a quarter and an eighth inch down cut bit, similar to these two. These are very easy to pick up. They're not overly expensive. You're gonna break some here or there, but it's not a common occurrence. So if you program something wrong, you may hit an uh-oh. Always keep two of these on hand at any given time, just for that reason. The majority of your projects will be cut with those two. Next, a couple of V-bits. Honestly, a 60 degree V-bit will do the majority of your work. A 90 degree V-bit is nice to have just for different angles on things, but these two V-bits will do a lot. And I only have one of these on hand each. A bowl and tray bit is really good for making trays. It keeps a nice round bowl on the bottom and it doesn't leave a lot of lines. At the edge of the cut, you'll get a nice bowl shape versus a 90 degree shape. Not necessary, but it is nice to have. And finally, a good surfacing bit. These are really good for resurfacing your tabletop when you've cut it all up. Or what I've used these for is flattening epoxy trays and slabs and things like that. These work excellent for that. It's really, what, two, four, six bits. That's all you need to get started anyway. I'll drop a link to all these bits so you know where to find them easier. These are the ones I buy personally and use in my shop. Next thing that kind of holds people back is what wood do you use to make these products out of and where do you get that wood? Plywood, sheet goods, you can get those at your home store. A lot of people make signs, different things like that. I made some cornhole boards out of some plywood using the CNC. Really easy, really simple, really fast. But when you get into what really sells for my market, walnut sells the best. We make a walnut guitar tray, baseball tray, router bit tray. I've tried selling those out of maple, but walnut is by far the leading seller of anything we've had. You can get walnut online shipped to you from various locations. I'll drop links in the description below to where I get mine. Uh, you could also look at Rockler, I think they sell hardwood. Woodcraft sells hardwood online as well as Woodpecker sells wood online. And a lot of times, if you keep an eye on those, you'll get deals, sales, things like that on their hardwoods. It's a good place to keep up, especially for like thinner stock, three quarter inch or so. I personally have bought from WTGHardwoods.com in the past. You have to contact them on their contact form, tell them what you're looking for. Then they can get you an estimate and ship it out. Sometimes lead times can be quite lengthy there, uh, four to six weeks sometimes, depending on how much you order, where they have to source it from, et cetera. But if you have a local hardwood store in your area, you can check them out as well. So who makes the best CNC machine for woodworking? I don't know, you tell me in the comments, but I, I, I'll tell you what I have, but you should absolutely do your due diligence and figure out what's best for you and your shop because your needs may be different than mine, right? I have the Carbide 3D Shapeoak 05 Pro. Before this, I had the Shapeoak 04 Pro. Full disclosure, they did send me this. This is the two foot by four foot version. I could have chose the four foot by four foot. I chose this one because it takes up so little room basically three foot by five foot, essentially. I love having this floor space back, but only three foot off the wall and still have all this walking room around my saw, 
my workbench, all that. That's the main reason I chose the two foot by four foot version. They have a four by four, they also have a two by two. This has been perfect for cutting trays, signs, even cornhole boards. I can't tell you how much stuff I've cut with this machine. It is a very nice machine. It's very well made. I love the ball screws. I love the under lighting, as silly as that may sound. I love that it comes with the work bed, these MDF inserts. It's all part of the package. Some companies, you don't have this bed. You have to kind of figure that out on your own. It comes with work holding, these clamps to hold your stuff down. It comes with a bit to get you started, the dust boot. It comes with a lot. And then you need to pick whether you want the VFD spindle or a regular router. I recommend the spindle if it's in your budget, but if it's not, then get the router. Both of them work extremely well. I've been nothing short of impressed with this machine. But more than that, their customer service. I called them one day out of the blue. They didn't know me from Adam. I just called the customer service line. I had an issue where things weren't going right on the first machine I had, but I had wired it up wrong across two wires. They even FaceTimed with me, video chatted, so we figured it out. Super simple. When I got this machine, I threw away a wire <laughs> when I was emptying the boxes out, and it was a, an essential wire. I couldn't operate the machine without it. They overnighted it to me. Like The customer service here is top notch, and the free training that you can get and they have cutrocket.com where you get those files. Like there's just a lot going on with this company. But with that said, again, do your, do your research, figure out what's best for you and your shop and then make an informed decision on what's gonna work best for you. Because I can sit here and tell you all day that this is a great machine, but you have to decide if it's right for you. One place I think people absolutely miss the mark on CNC's when they're thinking about buying one or maybe I shouldn't is economy of scale. Once you figure out a product that actually sells say these baseball trays, these router bit holder trays. Once you figure out that those products sell, it's simply rinse and repeat. You already have the file set up. The machine can already do all the work for you, most of the work for you. All you have to do is put the material on the machine and push go, and it just cuts it out over and over and over again. So long as that product is selling, you can just keep making them. As fast as the machine can make them, and as fast as you can sell them, you'll be making money. Now, that'll ebb and flow with most any product. But finding that right product for the right person is key, and that's where you'll start making your money. If you have a CNC, there's two tools that's gonna to be, well, a few tools that's gonna to be invaluable to you. Number one, a good multi-tool. This is a Ryobi multi-tool, and that's really great for cutting these tabs out of these parts and pieces after it gets done on the CNC. I use that all the time. Second, one of my favorite tools I've ever purchased is the Milwaukee Orbital Detail Sander. This is great for sanding into small parts, corners, things like that. This thing is awesome, especially for these trays and things like that. And of course, a regular orbital sander. Doesn't really matter what model you have, whatever works for you. Just sand your parts and pieces so that they're not rough. And the easiest way I've found to finish these products after they're cut out, after they're sanded, is just simply dipping them into food grade mineral oil. That'll bring out the natural color of all the woods, walnut, maple, and anything you're making, and they look fantastic. Let them dry overnight, and they're ready to ship. I don't soak them, I just kinda dip them and then wipe them clean, and then let it air dry. If you're looking for additional resources on CNC's, check out Andy Bird Builds, check out Sam Craft. Both of them have really good channels about CNC's. I've watched a lot of their content, I go to their content when I have a question a lot of times. So you can check them out, just make you a good informed decision before buying your CNC. If you have any specific questions about this CNC, go to my website, 731bookworks.com, hit that contact us button, and then just drop your question there. I'll try to answer it the best I can. If you like this video, you gotta check out my review of that Shape 5 Pro right there. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Thank you for watching.